Hello everyone, Team and Gamer, and today I have the pleasure of bringing you a huge edition of my Football Talk series. The series where I sit down and talk about events happening in real life football, be it domestically or internationally. And today there is a huge, huge piece of news that I want to talk about. But before I get into that, as always, let's talk a little bit about the game. This is a really, really tight Ultimate Team game, and the guy I'm playing against has an absolutely phenomenal Bundesliga side. It is, it's fantastic, you know, it has all of the glittering stuff. It is a top side and this guy made it incredibly, incredibly difficult to play against. He did a face for a style of defence where basically he just charged at me all game and he had a huge amount of pace. You know, Farfan, Royce, Lewandowski, a lot of pace in the team. So it was a very, very difficult game to play against for all of those reasons. But it's a nice game because I kept it really, really tight. I managed to battle and in the end get a good result. So it's a good game to watch in the background to show all of those things. But let's not beat around the bush anymore. Let's talk about Manchester United because, as most of you guys know by this point, David Moyes has been sacked by Manchester United. And this is a huge piece of news because... You know, I personally wasn't expecting this to happen. You know, David Moyes has had a very bad season at Manchester United, there's no doubt about that. But I was expecting him to be given another summer, be given a little bit of money to spend, and then go from there. But United have taken the decision to sack him. And, you know, like I said, I wasn't expecting it, but you can understand why. This season, United have been awful. And there's no other word to describe it. They have been awful. I mean... 11 defeats this season in the Premier League. That's a record for them in the Premier League era. This is going to be United's worst ever finish with their lowest points tally. And for this season, United, for the first time, have lost at home to West Brom and Newcastle and Swansea. They'd never lost at all in the league under Sir Alex Ferguson against Stoke. And they lost to Stoke. Everton did the double on United for the first time in 44 years. Yeah. They crashed out in the third round of the FA Cup. They lost three games in a row for the first time in a decade. They're not going to qualify for the Champions League for the first time in nearly two decades. It was an abysmal season. Absolutely abysmal season. And, and you, know, you could say, you know, everybody knew at the start of the season this was a United team that needed an overhaul. They had a lot of players who were aging, a lot of the superstars that had really driven Sir Alex to Ferguson's last team on. We're beginning to, you know, fade away a little bit. The Vidiches, the Evers, the Ferdinands. You know, everybody said Manchester United's midfield needs a lot of work. It was definitely a side that needed work. And the transfer window was just laughable, really, from Manchester United's point of view. Because they couldn't convince anyone to join. And the only player they signed was Maron Fellaini. And they signed him... For like three or four million pounds, and they could have signed him at the start of the window because he had a clause in his contract that expired. So that just it, it smacked of desperation. That said to everybody who paid attention that David Moyes didn't really want to sign Maron Fellaini, but did so because he was forced to on the final day, on the final few days of the window, and that just really set the tone for the season right there. I mean, United have played badly and you know there's one thing losing at Manchester United's not the problem really it's going out there without any real desire or passion or will to win or try and that's the thing that's really I think cost David Moyes' job there have been so many spineless performances from Manchester United and that's it when you look to Sir Alex Ferguson's Manchester United they might lose a game but even if Manchester United played abysmally in the last 15 minutes they would be throwing everything forward they'd be trying their best they'd be they'd you know, they'd never give up. They'd try until that final whistle blew and the 25 minutes of added time had expired. And if they'd lost, then at least you'd be able to sit back and go, wow, United really gave that a go. And this season, that has not happened enough from David Moyes. I mean, the major games that really stand out for that, you know, the Liverpool defeat at home, the 3-0, Manchester United were absolutely torn apart by Liverpool that day. Torn apart. And... The team selection, again, has just been super, super negative, which hasn't helped. A lot of the time, he's played Maron Fellaini wide on a few occasions, which is just brainless. He's played Shinji Kagawa wide all season, which just doesn't work. You know, he's, he's got these young players. He's got the Adnan Yanazais. He's got the Danny Welbecks. You know, people who will actually give a bit of impetus to the side and a bit of pace and a bit of movement and a bit of, you know, something special. But he just he refuses to pick them. He really just refuses to pick them. And you know, in the quarterfinal of the Champions League, you know, when they were 
at home to Olympiacos and they needed to get a result. Who did he play? He played 40-year-old Ryan Giggs in the centre of midfield and Giggs was by far Man United's best player that night and that just told the story of Manchester United this season. You know, the players just don't seem, although they didn't seem to have, you know, sided with David Moyes they really seem to have just completely lost interest by about you know four or five months into the season you know, by Christmas they were about eight points behind the lead you know not the end of the world definitely salvageable but since Christmas it's just got even worse and there was that brief little spell when they got through to the quarterfinals of the Champions League and after beating the Olympiacos in the last 16 and you know it, it looked possibly like United were beginning to get back and Moyes was finding his feet but since then there's just been even more dreadful dreadful results and you know Manchester City again demolished them at Old Trafford demolished it was a 3-0 win but it was just comfortable and that's the problem I mean teams going to Manchester United going to Old Trafford might win but comfortable was never a word you described. Like I was mentioning earlier, you know, United would throw the kitchen sink at them. It would be a really competitive fixture, and that just has not been the case. You know, this spineless, spineless performance from Manchester United is just so out of character for them. And let's not forget, you know, this is a side that won the league at a canter last season. And yes, they've got plenty of aging players, and yes, it's a side that needs a bit of a transition period. But this is not a side that should be finishing 7th in the Premier League. You know, this is not a side that Everton should finish comfortably above them. It's, it's really disappointing. I think you know, that Everton game, 2-0 you know, on the 20th, the final nail in the coffin. Because again, it was just flat. Manchester United went out onto that pitch and didn't look interested. And you can just tell that a large proportion of that dressing room had just given up on David Moyes they'd really given up and in some ways I do feel a bit sorry for him because you know it was a huge step up from Everton to Manchester United you know he hadn't really had any success he got to the Champions League once and that was basically it in his 11 year period at, at Goodison Park but a lot of the problems that Manchester United have had this season have been David Moyes' own fault he has had some ludicrous tactical and team selection decisions, like I've mentioned already. Playing Maron Fellaini on the wing has to be the most stupid thing I've seen a football manager do in a long time. And that's up against some pretty stiff competition. You know, Maron Fellaini is many things. A quick, tricky winger is not one of them. You know, playing Kagawa wide, playing Tom Cleverley at all. You know, it's just... He just didn't seem to have an idea of what he wanted to do. There was no philosophy. There was no team selection. There was, there was just nothing. It wasn't like he was trying to play a certain way and it just wasn't working at the time and he was just trying to drill in the philosophy. It was just, oh, okay, one week we'll try this. Oh, that didn't work. Let's flip to this. Oh, that didn't work. There was, there was no consistency. There was no you know, methodology. There was just, you know, mediocrity. And that's something you can never, ever tolerate as Manchester United. You know, this is arguably the biggest football club in the world. If you don't think it's the biggest, then it's certainly in the top three or four. You know, up there with the Barca, Madrid, Bayern, Munich trio. You know, you'd certainly put Manchester United up there with those three. So, just to go from league champions to complete mediocrity. And not just mediocrity, but mediocrity where nobody seemed to care. No, none of the players were seen bothered. David Moyes seemed incompetent, and it was just a disaster this season, an absolute and mitigated disaster. But you know, Manchester United, they've taken the decision to sack David Moyes. I personally would have given him at least another, you know, three or four months, because yeah, it's been bad. But this is still not David Moyes' team by any stretch of the imagination. He signed really one player, you know. This was an opportunity for Manchester United to say, you know, we aren't going to be like the, the standard football club sacking a manager every five minutes. You know, we are going to give this guy a chance. We're going to give him a, a transfer window. Now that he's actually had a season and he understands roughly what's going on. And Ed Woodward's had another season as well. Because don't forget, it was Sir Alex Ferguson had David Gill alongside him, the chief exec, for a long, long time. You know, and that stability, that you know, the dream team, if you like, of David Gill and Sir Alex Ferguson kept... Manchester United very very grounded both of those massive figures in Manchester United left at the same time so you had a new manager given the most difficult job in modern football following Sir Alex Ferguson paired with a new chief executive Ed Woodward but, you know that's not gonna work is it that should have been 
very, very obvious. You know, Manchester United, what they should have done is ask David Gill to stay on another season, and that really would have been useful because it would have enabled David Moyes to have a season with somebody who knew what they were doing just to bed him in. And obviously, the first thing David Moyes did as well, he cleared out a lot of the old coaching staff. You know, people like Rene Moylenstein, who obviously went on to manage Fulham a little bit unsuccessfully, but was a massive part of Manchester United's success on the coaching level. You know, was a hugely influential figure, just immediately cleared out the door. And, you know, he moved somebody like Ryan Giggs into a coaching role. He brought you know, Phil Neville in, obviously a United player, from you know, a, a few years back now. But these are not people who were a real integral part of the behind-the-scenes action of the success recently. You know, Phil Neville was a player a long time ago now at Manchester United, and now he's gone, and he was at Everton for a long time. You know, Ryan Giggs was a good player for Manchester United. He still is a useful player. But was he that important behind the scenes? You know, not really. So basically, Moyes has stripped away a lot of the, the solid foundation that made United so fantastically successful behind the scenes. You know, he's got a new chief exec alongside him who doesn't know what he's doing. He's had a terrible transfer window. And then he's come into a season and United have been abject, completely abject at times. And all of these things, you know, one of them at a time, they don't seem that much. But when you begin to add them up again and again and again, and like I mentioned, all of the records that have been broken, you know, the, the very, very unfashionable records of the you know, the lowest league amount of points since the Premier League has been founded and the most league defeats in the Premier League. And these are terrible things to have in your debut season when you've had a bad transfer window and, you know, you've just looked poor all over the field. So, you know... It's difficult now for Manchester United because this is a huge season for them and a huge transfer window for them. They're out of the Champions League and a lot of their rivals have gone a long way away from them now. If you look at Chelsea, if you look at Manchester City, even Liverpool, they have taken astronomical strides away from them now. And look at teams like Everton, look at teams like Spurs. You know, these are teams who, you know, Spurs have the opportunity really to, to get into the top four this season and they ballsed it up with some questionable purchases from Daniel Levy and Daniel Levy again it really put Spurs on the back foot this season when they had a glorious chance to make the top four but Manchester United they need a big off season and that starts with a new manager and there have been a few names banded around the one I think it'll actually go to is Louis van Gaal. You know, he obviously he's the Dutch national manager at the moment, but his contract does expire after the World Cup. He is a manager with proven track success. You know, he's been to Barcelona, he's been to Bayern Munich, he's won league titles. Obviously, he's the Dutch manager at the moment. You know, he is a guy with a proven track record at the highest level. Other managers who've been mentioned, you know, Jurgen Klopp's been mentioned. I think again, Jurgen Klopp would be a fantastic appointment, but he's come out and said that he doesn't want to be considered. He's very happy at Dortmund. You know, that's completely understandable. He's got a good thing going on at Dortmund, and Dortmund are a fantastic club. And Oh, you'd be very, very reluctant to leave. I saw a few people talk about Pep Guardiola, and I have to say, I would be shocked to see Pep Guardiola go to Manchester United. And you know, football very rarely shocks me because there's so many ridiculous things that go on. Managers getting sacked after 14 days, and ludicrous pay packages, and you know, silly decisions from the FA or whatever, and bad refereeing. So very few things actually shock me in football. If Pep Guardiola left Bayern Munich, that would actually shock me because they are. At the moment, the best team in Europe. And I don't think there's any disagreement about that. They are very, very likely to win the Champions League again. Obviously, they're up against an incredibly tough team in Real Madrid in the semi-finals this week. But if they win that, you'd back them to beat either Atletico or Chelsea in the final. You know, They arguably should have won more Champions Leagues than they have recently. Obviously, lost to Chelsea in that famous final in their own stadium not so long ago. But even in that game, they dominated. They relied on one piece of Drogba brilliance from a corner and some incredible last-ditch defending from Chelsea to, to stay in the tie. You know, they were clearly the better team. They have a phenomenal side. They have a young side as well. This is not a team full of 30-year-olds like when Inter won the uh, Champions League under Jose Mourinho. This is a team with a lot of young, talented Germans. They've already got Robert Lewandowski confirmed as a signing for next season. So this is a team that's going to get even better, which is just terrifying if you're any other team in Europe. So why would he leave a side which has the chance to establish a true European dynasty to go to a team not even in the Champions League at the moment? And obviously United are a big club, but so are FC Bayern, you know. That would really, really surprise me. So Van Gaal would be my appointment. 
if obviously all goes to plan. That I think that's what will happen. And it's rumoured that he's going to have a war chest of over a hundred million to spend, which again is a huge amount of money, an absolutely massive amount of money. But I think that's what Manchester United need because it would be quite conceivable to see 10, possibly even 15 players leave the club in the summer. You know, there's a lot of average players at Manchester United. You know, the Ashley Youngs, the Nannies, you know, Valencia has been bad this season. You know, Tom Cleverley, you know, uh, Hernandez has been rumoured to want to wanna go out the door because he's not getting playing time. Danny Welbeck's been linked with Spurs recently, again, because lack of playing time. Shinji Kagawa has been playing on the right all the time. He obviously isn't going to be happy with that, or on the left, you know, the winger. When he's arguably, you know, Shinji Kagawa is a German player of the season, German league player of the season. You know, he's no mug, and he's been played out of position, you know. And obviously with Juan Mata coming to the club now, Where's he going to fit in? You know, Robin van Persie, he was blatantly not happy this season. Is he going to leave the club? You know, there's a lot of players that you could conceivably see leave there. So this is definitely a huge, huge off-season for Manchester United. They need to attract players. And it's going to be difficult not being in the Champions League. But with that war chest and with a lot of good contract offers... They could be back. But guys, thank you so, so much for listening to the video. I'd really be interested to hear what your opinions are of the David Moyes sacking. Should he have been given more time or was now the right time to do it? Because uh, it's a monumental step. You know, Whatever happens now, this is a, a big moment in the history of Manchester United. It's a real turning point. They could either get back very quickly to where they think they belong or they get to go through a period of more failure and all of a sudden the other teams will pull even further away from them. So it's a very, very crucial turning point now. But once again, guys, thank you so, so much for watching and as always, have a great day.